I'll let you guys in on a little secret. Despite trying out a good portion of the anime that comes out every season, I am a picky guy. I get fixated on the most insignificant inconsistencies in a show's writing, and it's why I drop an anime usually within the first three episodes of it coming out. A show I gave this the treatment to was Boku no Kokoro no Yabayatsu, also known as The Dangers of My Heart. When I saw the lineup for Spring 2023 and read the synopsis of this anime, I was interested in seeing how it would turn out. It had the comedy and romance tags, and you know me, I love a good rom-com. From the summary, it sounded like it was about some edgy teenager wanting to murder the popular girl of his class, just like my junior high days. For real, for real. When it came out, I watched the first episode with my friends, and we couldn't make it through half the episode. Waited around for next week, because surely it gets better. I tried the next episode, couldn't make it through half of that either. Waited around for next next week. I tried the third episode. Couldn't make it through a third of that. So what is this mysterious culprit that made the anime unbearable to watch for me? Alright, let me explain this in more detail. The anime centers around the outcasts of a junior high class, Ichikawa and his inner thoughts of murdering the popular girl Yamada. He calls himself a creep and acknowledges that his thoughts aren't normal. Yamada, on the other hand, is basically your standard cute ditzy anime girl. Because she has a social awareness of a goldfish, Yamada is constantly in trouble but doesn't have the book smart or money smart to either recognize that what she's doing is socially unacceptable or get herself out of that situation. Ichikawa is way more conscious of his actions and the other people around around him, and he's able to realize when Yamada needs help. But since he labels himself as undesirable and an outcast, Ichikawa doesn't solve her problems in a normal fashion, usually sacrificing his own pride and social etiquette to fix the situation. Now, if I somehow contracted dementia and forgot that this anime existed, and you got into contact with me directly and said, oh my god, hey ye, love your videos and your feet, second of all, you should watch this anime, and proceeded to repeat word for word the premise that I just summarized, based on that premise, I would actually think it'd be a pretty good show. So why did I drop this show originally? Boobs. Anime is notorious for being open with fan service and sexual themes in general because of Japanese culture. And while I do enjoy the idea of that type of stuff being treated less as taboo, this show is man. Every episode, there's always some close-up shot of Yamada's body or just a massive pair of conkers, a, a real good badonk badonks blown up on my screen, or the other guys in class doing something obnoxious like asking the girls if they jack off. Don't get me wrong, I am a straight male. I love objectifying anime girls because they don't have real feelings is what I think straight men say. I know that at that age, since their kids going through puberty or whatever, they get to explore those types of feelings and ideas, and from my experience, while I would love to pretend children are pure, empty-headed, brainless amoeba, middle school kids do talk about sex and genitals and whatever else the devil feeds them because it's taboo and novel to them. My issue is, why does this show have to be so in your face about it? There's this one episode where Yamada is making purush, which now that I googled, isn't even a real thing. Thing, but it's supposed to be some fruit mixture where you add milk to make the mixture goopier. Ichikawa helps Yamada make it because she's a brainlet. She follows the instructions, then wow, she trips and it gets all over her. Oh man, does this scene make me very uncomfortable? Again, there's nothing wrong with acknowledging the sexual thoughts teenagers can have at that age, but the frequency of these events really makes it feel forced. Alright, so that's why I dropped this show, so what made me want to give it another chance? It was the fact that a second season is currently airing for winter 2024, along with this extremely high rating of said sex season. It's an 8.7. Surely my first impression of the show was shallow and it gets better. I also skimmed some reviews and some people said that the way the relationship between Yamada and Ichikawa cultivates is Reddit Wholesome Award. So why not give it a second chance? I binged all 12 episodes of the first season in a day and here are my findings. The show is... Alright. Not as bad as I originally thought, but I'm only saying that because I strapped myself to a chair with duct tape to watch everything. If you're a sex hater 9000 like me and want to watch the anime, skip the first six episodes. I don't know why, I don't know how, the first six episodes are super obnoxious. Everything past that? Not too bad. There are actually some hidden gems throughout the anime. Ichikawa realizes his thoughts of murdering Yamada are actually some form of attraction to her because if he kills her, he gets to feel connected to her personally, which is extremely creepy if you really think about it, but Ichikawa doesn't overly fantasize about these thoughts like actual psychopaths. You get to hear his thoughts for the majority of the show and their normal reactions, not Ted Bundy ones. Once Ichikawa realizes he likes Yamada though, he stops with these thoughts entirely. I loved Ichikawa's self-conscious 
his mind. He admits to being creepy and an outcast not because he genuinely enjoys murdering people, but because it's a self-defense mechanism to keep his distance from others. Ichikawa doesn't want to be too attached to anyone, since it might hurt him, which is a bit cliche, but the fact that he puts the entire creepy bit on as a facade to mask this insecurity is actually quite interesting and clever in terms of writing. On the other hand, there's not much to say about Yamada except that she's brainless. Every episode, Ichikawa saves her from some sort of predicament, and Yamada starts picking up on his actions, which is how they slowly become friends. Ichikawa is overly self-conscious and is aware of Yamada's standing as a popular girl, so their relationship builds in secret to prevent Yamada getting hit with negative street cred. What's crazy is that he starts actually interacting with the other people in his class instead of being the quiet kid, so as the show goes on, Ichikawa's friendship with Yamada becomes more acceptable too. The show has a lot of interesting ideas to play with, and they're explored in a reasonable manner, as long as you skip all the boob jump scares. Ignoring the obnoxious bits around sex, the biggest issue I have with the anime is that Yamada and Ichikawa don't have good chemistry together. I'm not saying that they need a specific reason why to kiss kiss fall in love, because I get that sometimes life just hits you with that. Sin, sin city was but they both misinterpret each other too often for me to handle. Overall, after watching all 12 episodes of the first season, it's not as bad as I originally thought, coming with a few brilliant moments, which is a good reminder to me that my tastes aren't perfect.